Welcome everyone to our Envision Berwick 101. Tonight we're going to give you a brief history on our community revitalization process and some information about the future of um, our committee and this downtown community revitalization process. Um, so I guess first we'll introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Serena Galisha. I am co-chair of this committee. Tom Wright, I'm Berwick Selectman. James Bellissimo, I'm also the co-chair of Envision Berwick. Uh, Frank Underwood, at large member of the Envision Berwick. Uh, Paul Bovier, I'm the Preservation and Heritage Subcommittee member. Rick Vandenberg. <laughs> Craig Plasted, <Please> member. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Jessel, committee member. Niall Shore, planning board member. Penny Zust, Community Outreach Committee member. Excellent. And um, also missing here tonight is Dave Andreessen, Pat Boybear, Kevin Gray, and Don Young. Um, so we are 13 members, I believe, in all. Um, and we've been working for a few years on this community revitalization process with a lot of community participation. Um, it's been a really incredible process. And as the first example, um, I brought up this photo of the beautiful community mural that is outside on the prime tanning wall. This mural was done by the Berwick Art Association last summer, which is just an example of one of the great community groups that has um, begun during this, these past few years. Um, so there are over 100 participants on this mural, um, and as you can see, dozens of businesses that, as well that were donating to the effort. So. Yes, next slide. I guess I, what I'd like to say is that we got to Berwick, my wife and I, in 1979, and we recognized how busy the prime tanning area was. But you always heard stories of how highly industrialized it was when the rail cars would show up across the river and the forklifts would bring the hides across and run them into the mill and around and around. So when prime tanning closed its doors, and you gotta remember prime actually employed over 750 people at its peak, but when prime closed its door in 2008, we were kind of left here with, a, with a, a big white elephant across the way here. And we felt we needed to take a, a proactive approach to get this thing moving. It was sitting there, it was tied up in bankruptcy, and, and, and you'll hear about some of, these other, some of these things as we go along a little further. But the idea was is we needed to do something to be proactive. The town also needed to get a little bit of, of reinvigoration into it. And so we actually asked the townspeople to vote on a Warren article, and they did. And that Warren article allowed us a small stipend of about $25,000 to get this thing underway. And it started out with about 25 people meeting upstairs in the auditorium, and it finally morphed into a steering committee of seven people. At that point in time, we were about to embark on what I take as 18 months of fun because it was a lot of fun doing that. Um, we started out, we felt as a steering committee, we wanted to formulate a questionnaire to get out to the community. So one of the first things we did was send out a questionnaire to everybody in town with 12 questions on it. We were fortunate we got over 28% responses back and that kind of gave us a sense of, of what the pulse of the town was, what the pulse wanted, also what the town did not, did not want. Um, over the course of that same 18 month period, we held a series of, of charrettes. We had a professional consultant come in and help us with some of the renderings and the pictures. But we still think one of the most important activities that happened during that entire process was the celebration of the 300th. That was a weekend in town where there was a lot going on in the downtown. It drew the people to the downtown. Um, a combination of the car show with the Legion and the seminars that were put on and just the FaceTime with the public. We had some of our renderings at that point in time and we were able to share that with them. But I almost take that as the, as the turning point in, in our public outreach process. Um, we did a series of 101s too because we had to educate ourselves as well as the public at large. And if you remember some of the 101s, we did an economics 101. We did a a TIF 101, we did a, a, I mean a, a Brownsfield 101, um, we did a River 101, just getting the people to understand that there's an education that we all needed to have if we were going to be successful in moving forward. We took that, that survey and that input that we received and we actually developed, we thought was the most important 
heart to where we were going, and that was the vision statement. I'm going to have James just take a second here and read that vision statement because it's, it's on the cover of our, of our report. James, sure. if you could do that, please. Sure. Berwick is a rural riverside town that appreciates the importance of a connected, actively engaged community and proudly cultivates its unique strengths and small town character by promoting small business and creative outlets where local talent, entrepreneurship, and agricultural flourish, fostering a healthy relationship with the land and river through conservation, environment, environmentally minded development, substantial and functional green space, and responsible recreation, creating a safe, friendly downtown where youth, families, and community come together. I just remember we analyzed all the data, kind of talked about it, and we hashed out this, this little snippet, and it really set the flavor for the rest of our report. So why did we end up with a vision report? Well, we needed, that, that was our basic mission statement as we formed our steering committee. So we, we developed that vision report, and it served multiple purposes. One is that it was the basis by which we were able now to go back to our comprehensive master plan and amend that master plan. That's a, uh, the master plan for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It was part of the growth management law in the early, late 70s, early 80s that the state of Maine required all towns to develop a master plan. The master plan is the basis by which you gain the enforcement authority to enact ordinances. And you'll hear a little bit when Paul speaks on the land use ordinance and what we're doing uh, this, coming, this coming town meeting. But it was important to take that vision report, present it to the public, and then ask the public to vote on that, to adopt it, and to make it inclusive in the comprehensive plan. And all that took place in, in last year's town meeting. We adopted that uh, master plan and the, and the vision report. Um, so as we move forward now, we also in that, in that vision report identified various policies and action items. And you'll hear some of the things that we're gonna talk about here tonight that are underway that we've actually done. Those are all things that were part of those action items. Uh, some of them were low hanging fruit type action items and you'll hear about those. And some of them were a little bit more more involved. The big one will be the Brownsfield, and Rick Vandenberg is going to speak a little bit on that as we get going. But the idea here is Berwick has turned a corner in 18 months or, long, or longer, and now we're moving forward with implementing many of these things that the townspeople uh, want to see and will support as we move forward. So with that, I'm going to just turn it over to back to Serena because I think she wants to do a little bit with the subcommittee so you can hear what we're doing and how active we've been. Yeah, so during this 18 month process that the Downtown Vision Committee was working on the vision report and doing all of these threats and community outreach things, people just came out of the woodwork. Most of you are here tonight. Um, <laughs> and so we started this idea of subcommittees um, to help people organize and do the things that they were passionate about. Um, so one of the subcommittees I'll have people speak from each one um, if they wouldn't mind. Um, so one of the subcommittees that formed was the Trails Committee. And a big project they recently completed was the Penny Pond Trail. So would Craig or Nicole like to speak on that? I'm prepared to speak tonight. <laughs> I'm just here to find out. <laughs> cool. uh, one of the projects that we worked on was uh, the Penny Pond Trail. And if you go by either side up, Wilson Street or down Logan Street, you can see the signs are out there for people to uh, participate and use that trail. Uh, it was an Eagle Scout project, and then we kind of took it on as a as a group. Somebody came and donated time to put logs in, so you wouldn't be walking in the mud. But if you get a chance, take a take a walk out there. It's it's a beautiful spot. There's a nice little pond out there. There's a place to sit. Um, I'm a, I was also on the Riverfront Committee, and we had a piece of land down by the water department that was owned by the town. And last night we got approval from the selectmen to raise funds for a three-phase project down there. We're going to start with um, putting in a dock system sometime, hopefully this summer. And hopefully down the road, up to maybe two or three years from now, we'll have a, a building down there for outreach. I don't think they can be able to see it. Yeah, I don't think they can see it. 
<laughs> those have been those have been posted around town. Those yep, the these are and you check your mail because sometime in the next week or two you're going to get a a mailer that so you can send money in and donate to it. So <laughs> <laughs> cool, awesome. Um, next we have the sustainability committee that worked really really hard. Um, to start Berwick's first ever Winter's Farmers Market series. And we have Penny from the Sustainability Committee to talk about that. So the Winter Farmers Market has been going for two years now. Um, and we have an uh, average of 24 vendors uh, for each market. And we have had hundreds of visitors at each market. I think we had <coughs> almost 500 was our top number. Um, at one market. I want to say it was 467, but I may be <laughs> off by just a few on that one. Um, and um, we've recently uh, just really um, coalesced our, our new committee for keeping that market going for another year. So um, if you come out to the market this Sunday, the 26th, from uh, 10 to 1.30, um, we will uh, have a special surprise at the market, according to Frank. Um, and it will be our last market. You'll meet our new committee members, and um, we'll be we'll be there and excited and getting ready for next year. And I also want to just talk about the community outreach committee while I'm already here at the podium. Um, the community outreach committee um, has all several things going on, and they're all kind of tied together. Um, we would like to reinvigorate the effort to raise funds for a community center. Um, and in doing that, some other things that we're doing is we're um, starting uh, to have a movie night. Uh, the first one will not actually be at night. It will be this Saturday, the 25th, at the library in conjunction with their Earth Day celebration, which they're going to have on Saturday instead of today. Um, and the movie that we'll be showing is In Transition 2.0. Um, and this is about um, groups get, getting together. Um, it centers around the um, transition from fossil fuels, but it's, it's not just about that. It's also about community involvement and community um, coming together and um, a lot like what we're doing here. So I think it's a good start to our movie series. Um, and that will be this Saturday, the 25th at uh, noon at the library. Cool. Just one more comment. The, the riverfront is going to have, be at the farmer's market. Can you, Nicole, give us a little bit on what that? Oh, gosh, is? I would love to. I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm really only here to find out about prime tanning. <laughs> 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 but, um, the yeah, the Friends of the Berwick Riverfront will be at the uh, farmer's market this Sunday from 10 to 1.30. We'll be talking more about our project and collecting donations. We hope to get things started for our project. We're really excited. We're ve we are very excited that we got approval last night and we're, we're able to go forward with that. Cool. Thank you. This is probably while we're talking about the farmer's market, um, there's another aspect to it, Penny, that's coming up also. There's going to be some of the uh, business people in Berwick that are sustainable, have sustainable type businesses. I think there'll be several that'll be uh, showing some of the things that are made in town by our local people. Yeah, this, this farmer's market is also a sustainability fair. Um, so there will be different um, local businesses and no nonprofit organizations that are working um, mm -hmm. with renewable resources. Um, what are some of the other ones, Penny? I don't know. That up so but I think it is mostly around renewable resources okay cool so and we hope the parking situation is much much improved because we did get permission to use the lots across the way for the vendors to park in oh, so excellent. now that the public that may have tried to get here in the past and might have gotten a little discouraged there should be ample parking out here to entertain anybody that shows up so and we happen to be the last winter's farmers market on the whole seacoast so if you want fresh veggies you better be there this Sunday. It's the only time to get them. Who's next on the community? All right. So with all of this exciting um, movement going on and people working. Um, yeah, we've created quite, quite the buzz. Indeed. We've uh, gone viral, as they say. We've still got three committees you haven't talked about. Wait, what? Oh, There's did we forget you, Frank? Yes, you did. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> let my friend Paul go first. All right. I wrote my notes right. down here. Just sorry, to I'll, right, I'll be forgot. real short, Frank. <laughs> all right, we'll be short. I am short. All right, so preservation uh, and heritage. All right, so in, in uh, the comprehensive plan, uh, the, the action items included uh, many things that relate to Berwick history, and 
I'll bet you most people in Berwick don't know what great history this town has. I mean, we were uh, started in 1713 as one of the earliest towns in the state. We have had people um, that were in our town in the 1700s that became governors, they became uh, Revol Revolutionary War generals. Um, that's where Sullivan Street came from, the Sullivan family. So there's a rich history that I think has really uh, never been <coughs> explored or exposed in town. So what the, one of the action items that we wanted to do is to bring the Berwick Historical Society uh, back up. Um, many of the members had uh, passed away or it had become largely inactive. And we had our first um, Berwick Historical Society uh, presentation uh, last Wednesday. We had three people come down from Mary Meeting Bay to talk about the Scottish prisoners that have, were brought to Maine in the very early 1700s. And they, they have an archaeological dig up there going. Huh. And in Berwick, the connection is we also have many, many Scot I Scotch Irish people that came in from the Route 91 Scotland part of York that moved to Berwick. Um, and we would like to uh, do more presentations like this. There are three more presentations coming up this year. Um, and so stay posted on those because uh, they'll be advertised. Um, the other thing we've started doing is identifying places that are important in town, both cultural, historical. Uh, we're going to be coming up with a list over this year uh, to be handed over to the Board of Selectmen so for them to look at. Mm -hmm. And many other things. Is that too much? That, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, on the economic development side, um, that was one of the main drivers of, of starting this whole thing here was to redevelop the, across the street. But there are many other things that have, that have surfaced along the way. And one of the ones I kind of wanted to mention is, is a couple of things that we're doing. One is the Esterbrook School. And we started looking at that, and we're working with a local contractor, Ralph Blackington from Horn Construction, has uh, offered some assistance to us on giving us some idea of what would be involved in the cost of that. Tom's pretty much coordinating all that because he's got a good relationship with Ralph. But we had a developer come in, and he's looked at that. And, and just to clarify, the Esterbrook School is which one? And the Esterbrook School is the building right up behind. It, it includes the, uh, it's right up behind the police station. And the site is actually made up of two schools. It was the Esterbrook and the Doran School. And the Esterbrook is the white building up on the top of the hill. And the Doran School is the one down on the lower part, which has the police station in the former gymnasium in there which is currently empty. So we had a developer come in and we walked through and he's interested in reaching out to a couple of the community colleges, York County Community College, Southern Maine University and some of those some of those schools. So we're helping along the way by gathering some information on what would be involved in that building. We think that the direction it might go in it also lends itself to to separating the two schools back to the way they were and create possibly this rec center that Penny's been talking about or just alluded to here to look at the feasibility of using the old gymnasium part of that as the rec center, use the common lobby coming in and then leave the police station where it is uh, on that site. So that's kind of exciting and that's, that's in the works. The other piece I wanted to bring up and I brought it up at the Selectman's meeting last evening is from an economic development perspective. We also wanted to reach out there to find out what grant programs might be out there. And Scott Richardson's done a lot of work on, on grants associated with the river, but we've been looking at grants more associated with business and with infrastructure, because those are some of the things we're going to need downtown to support the redevelopment of that. So Tom and I had an opportunity to go to Rural Developments Conference last Friday. We got some face time with key people in that organization, Dean Churchill, who heads up the entire business side, and they have a whole separate grants program available to individual businesses as well as working through economic development committees. And the other side of it is um, Mike Jenkins deals with the infrastructure. And infrastructure can be everything from water and sewer, which obviously our site is pretty well served by those municipal utilities, but infrastructure can include sidewalks, roadways, drainage, and some of the other things that we're talking about possibly recreating in there and creating some green space. 
So we are going to invite them down sometime here in June, and they're more than willing. And we're going to kind of lay out everything we're thinking about, and we're going to see if it best fits any of their any of their programs. Um, so that's two of the endeavors under the Economic Development Committee, and I got. So there are many. <laughs> there's more coming later on this evening's show. So yeah. <laughs> so um, back to all the buzz that has been created from this whole community process of everyone and every group from everywhere um, doing exciting things. There have been um, a lot of people talking about us. Absolutely. And uh, first, I want to take a minute. The subcommittees, you guys are doing amazing work. It's, um, I think, when the, we kind of envision the subcommittees, I think it's getting to a point where it's even better than I even envisioned initially. So congratulations to all you guys. It's amazing what you're doing. Yeah. And now all of these people have heard about us, yeah. which is great. We have, <laughs> we have like, we have over 500 um, followers on Facebook. Um, anytime we post something, we get um, significant feedback. Um, we have, um, we've been having a recurring article in the Foster's Daily Democrat. We, um, Serena helped um, submit an article to the Citizens Institute on Rural Design, which has a blog following over 10,000 people. And it's, and it's, uh, I mean, it's available nationally. And there's people I've seen comments on it that are inspired by what, by what we're doing. Um, so this is kind of the, the buzz that has been created from envisioning downtown Berwick. Um, and we have developed the vision and we've transformed into Envision Berwick, which is actually implementing the vision. Yeah, so right after we finished the vision report, the Downtown Vision Committee turned into the Envision Berwick Committee as it is today with all of the members that introduced themselves to you earlier. Um, and our mission as the Envision Berwick Committee is to implement the comprehensive plan and vision report. Um, and so this is a pretty big task and we had two big projects to focus on first. Um, the first one was creating an agreement with the prime tanning mortgage holders. And Tom Wright, who's a selectman, is going to give us a little more information on that. In, at the end of last summer, is, uh, the owners of the prime tanning site, the Fund of Jupiter, and the town of Berwick started negotiating. And one of the big problems with redeveloping that site is that it has hazardous waste on it. Is, uh, and the way the grant system works is a private entity cannot apply for the grants to clean that up through the government funds. So what we did is we reached an agreement, a mutual agreement with the fund of Jupiter and the town, where the town foreclosed on the property and took title so that we can apply for grants in order to start cleaning it up. As the parcel was subdivided into seven pieces, correct? And so you can only apply for the grants in parcels of three, so we applied for three grants that should be hopefully hearing very soon in the next month or so about. But part of the agreement was that we would clean it up and then turn it back over to the Fund of Jupiter to redevelop itself. But a lot of what we're doing here with the Envision Committee is driving that, is what we do with our land use ordinances and things now will determine what goes over there. So it's important that we work on that. And I don't know if you want to talk about the brownfields now or you want yeah. to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick Vandenberg, committee member, has been working with us on the brownfields and he can give us some more information. Thanks. Um, so just a little bit of history on, on the brownfields grant front. About a year, a year ago, January, we applied for what's called a site-specific brownfields grant to essentially do the same thing that we've, we've just applied for, but we, we didn't get the grant. And so, so part of the process was to get, ensure that the, that the town acquired the property so we could apply for these cleanup grants because you have to own the property at the time that you apply for the grant. And so once the agreement was in place, which was as of De December, we applied for th the three uh, cleanup grants that Tom spoke about. Each of the grants are through the e an EPA program called the Brownfields program. They're each worth $200,000. We expect to hear about that grant. The window that we could hear from EPA begins 
about now, and it was sort of the, la the last time that I expect that we could hear from, from EPA would be in early June, that we would get, a, get the word as to whether we received those grants. And, you know, there's, <coughs> there's some exciting things that will happen, obviously, if we get the Brownfields grants, and that will be that we can fo move forward with um, cleaning up those three parcels. And the three parcels that were applied for are what we call lots four, five, and six, and they're along the school, the school street side and um, just behind the subway buildings. So, so you can think of it in terms, it's a kind of the front piece of the property that's been applied for. And um, it's a pretty rigorous process, the, the Brownfields grant uh, process. Myself, I work for a company called Weston & Sampson. So Weston & Sampson allowed me to donate my time to write the grant. In addition, another private entity, the Criteria Associates, which is based in Westbrook, uh, in Westbrook uh, Maine, they also um, donated their time, which is a substantial effort of probably all told between a year ago and, um, and this year, maybe 150 hours worth of time was donated to, to move this forward, all with the idea that what's across the street could be bigger, could be better, could be more important for the community. And so that, that sort of that, that, that in essence is, is what the Envision Berwick Committee is all about, and that's why, why we, we applied for that. And that's why it's sort of a major tenet of what we're doing. Yeah. And so I guess, um, can you give us kind of a scenario one, um, we, get, we get the Brownfield grant, and scenario two, we don't get the Brownfield grant? <laughs> We're getting it. Come on, Serena. I thought that was for the next slide, but yeah, absolutely. So if we get the Brownfields grants, all three of them, I expect that if we get one, we'll probably get all three. That's sort of the way EPA works. They understand that when you come in for what's called this cleanup grant, this, this grant that we applied for, that you've already done work to assess sort of what's going on and you understand what the problem is. And if you apply for, you can apply, like Tom said, you can apply for three grants at a time and it's, it's the money. It's, you can apply for essentially for $600,000 worth of, worth of cleanup grants at a time with three individual parcels. And so if we get that, the town will be very busy between the time we get it and say mid, mid to late summer to hire a contractor. They'll put, a, put a, an R, an, a request for qualifications out. They'll hire a qualified contractor. The contractor will then come in and start doing uh, a variety of documents to demonstrate to EPA what they'll do for a cleanup. And a lot, of those, a lot of that process, the good news is because that's an EPA process, it's all very public and there'll be public meetings that will be involved. So as a community, you'll have an understanding of when things are moving forward and sort of what's happening and what it means for you. Mm -hmm. So that's the exciting part about what happens if. And uh, there's a schedule in the grant application, and, and I'm going by memory, but I think the schedule for that initial phase that they'll have a contractor sort of hired by sometime in the fall and the contractor would begin work and, um, and start cleaning up all three parcels. And I think the, it's a three-year grant period, but I think we, in the scheduling, we compress that time a little bit. And I think it sort of finishes before the three years are up. So we can get the parcel back to Funds of Jupiter, and Funds of Jupiter can either attract a developer or move forward with, with development plans. So that's the what if we get it part, and that's the exciting part. I guess the, 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 the little bit downer is if we don't get it, and, and, and for whatever reason, federal funding is off, and and because I can't imagine it's my grant application because <laughs> we had a, I feel like a winning grant application. We'll see, <laughs> but if we don't get it, then uh, we're sort of back to a little bit to the drawing board where we have to the we, the town will still have the property and the grant cycle is a yearly cycle. So we would in the fall then be preparing uh, another set of grant applications, which would be very similar to what we what we've applied for. I don't know that we would change it much, but we would just be sort of waiting for federal funding to, to be there and to, and to, you know, for them to make the, the right decision to, to give us the money, I guess. So. Cool. I'd, I'd just like to add a little bit on that is as far as the grants go is the way it's the contract is set up is the town can keep applying for grants through the USDA, but any other grants that we feel may help us. And that's one of the things that Frank and I went to last Friday with the USDA is some of their programs are evolving funds, so there's no deadline that we have to come apart against. So we'll, we'll look at it all options here. 
So uh, And we're not just looking at the prime site. Just remember, we're looking at the downtown in its entirety. And there are other things going on, like the Esterbrook School. We've talked about it, the access to the river. And you're going to hear a few things down the road with PSNH property and those things that there are other things going on. If we don't get it, we're not going to just sit on our hands and wait till next year. Exactly. We, there we is a lot to do and a lot more to things do. to move forward. So Yeah. And on that note, um, these few smaller um, projects that were kind of low-hanging fruit in the vision report we were able to do um, this past year. Um, we facilitated um, with choosing the lights for this bridge, the Summers Earth Berwick right. Bridge, the beautiful LED lights that shine down, so there's no yeah, we worked, light That pollution. was a joint effort with the city of Summersworth. For those of you who don't know, that that bridge was, was put in play by funding coming from the Maine DOT and the New Hampshire DOT, and particularly some funds that the city of Summersworth received. Summersworth, as you know, is also doing a lot over there in their downtown, if you've been through there, with everything up the hill in their Main Street. So the bridge was kind of our first shot at, at working jointly with them. So we picked the lights in conjunction with Dave Sharples and his people, and that's how you ended up with, and, and I will say that the two five-foot sidewalks on that bridge was a large part of, of input from the city of Summersworth. If you were familiar with the old bridge, you couldn't even walk on one side, and the other one, you'd, you'd break your ankle if you did. So the, the effort, jointly between the two municipalities has, I think, benefited in a significant improvement in this interstate bridge that we have. And is we, a great metaphor for our going forward. <laughs> right. And the idea is we kind of want to start using the theme there because we get if we get the people to walk through beautiful Summersworth, get down and walk across the beautiful bridge, we need a place for them to go to. And that's our task to get to that downtown on our side of the river. So that was something that and we had a committee that, that, that did that. Um, one of the other things that we looked at, you see it up here, was the pine tree zone. And I'm going to have Tom speak a little on that because we, that was one of the things we found that could be very instrumental in getting businesses in here. It's a program that, that Maine's been running for a number of years. Yeah, the, the pine tree zone development is, was originally set up to serve underdeveloped parts of the state. And when it was first envisioned, it was mostly up in northern Maine. But over the years, it, it, it modified itself until it spread. And in 2009, we were able to get it to include this part of the state, including Berwick. And what it does is it allows a company that brings new employment to a town a tax break. And the new employment, they can't, that means that they have to bring new jobs. They can't say Pratt & Whitney couldn't open a plant down here and move people down from Pratt & Whitney. That wouldn't be considered a new job. It would have to be something that was newly created. And we're working with our state representative, Beth O'Connor, now to try to get us put back into that because we lapsed out of it last year. And uh, these, these are things, these are just an example of some of the things that we're working at trying to attract more businesses into town and, and build up the workforce here again. Mm. And then again, uh, it may be small, but it started out three years ago with the Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts putting a Christmas tree for the first. We used to have beautiful trees in front of the town, at downtown town hall, and they got removed. Three years ago, the Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts started out with a project to put a tree up on the front step. And we kind of spun off of that to say, well, if we're going to put up a tree, let's put up something a little bit more <laughs> traditional. And let's try to reach out to the community to acquire trees. And over the last two years, we've had residents in the towns that have donated their trees. Last year's tree, I wanted to thank Steve and Zoe Guptill. It came from, it came from their house. There's a little history that we had gotten when the tree came, and we presented that to the public so they were aware of it. And I would like to say to the Guptals, if they're out there, I, I know you've got about eight or nine more trees out there, and we may be reaching out to you again sometime <laughs> down the road as we move forward. But it's become an annual thing. It's tied into the, Christ the Christmas parade. Ornaments are there for people to put on the tree. Um, the whole idea behind it was to, to continue to get people to come downtown. And that, that festivity that we have around that time of year is one of the draws to get people down here. So... Um, it's been it's small, but we think it's a big it's a big step in going in the direction we want to go in. Definitely, um, and then we also did con continued support for all of the various subcommittees, um, and actually did a really cool time capsule project on the Berwick's 300th 
anniversary, we worked with a few teachers at the high school um, to develop a writing project that I think it was freshmen and sophomores um, worked on. And so they all wrote personal essays about, um, about place. And so the, the kids who are, from, who are from Berwick wrote these really great one-page essays about Berwick and what it was like growing up in Berwick. Um, and we put that in the time capsule that will be opened... In 50 years. In 50 years. 49 so years. Yeah, 49. That'll be a pretty cool yeah, and snapshot. And thanks to Lisa, Lisa Eustace, we should be able to find this time capsule <laughs> in 50 years because we had a magic secret digging all over the place and we can never find the one from the previous 50 years so maybe we'll find that under urban renewal but <laughs> i guess that but the point the point is is that james and serena have promised to be here 49 years from now when they dig that up right guys right, right. <laughs> I, I promise i'm gonna be here I, i'm gonna be here too spirit yeah <laughs> Oh, no. I heard a no-no out -no there. <laughs> so, um, Where are we next? <laughs> what's next for 2015? Um, the big questions that are all in your mind. Uh, we did just explain to you about the results in the Brownfield Grant, the two scenarios, what happens if we do get it and what happens if we don't. And we will hopefully definitely know by early June. Um, so definitely look for a big announcement from us, hopefully. A big good announcement. Um, and then we also have um, an urban design and mixed use pilot project that we're working on. Um, so this would be a really site specific look at the, um, at the prime tanning space specifically to look at how we can best make this a downtown center um, so that it can have you know, some housing, some offices, some light manufacturing, if there's space for that, some functional green space, some community um, gathering areas, because that prime tanning space is nearly 12 acres. It's essentially our entire downtown. It's where a downtown should be. And so we want to squeeze out as much um, good mixed use planning that we can out of it um, so we're looking to a few different organizations to help us with this mixed-use pilot project to make sure that it's the best downtown um, we can be. So definitely stay tuned for that because we'll probably have opportunities for design charrettes and um, public input sessions. And what we're going to do, Tom, Tom's actually the, the Berwick facilitator for, for the, the, house, uh, the um, coalition's efforts. And Monday is a site walk and a first meeting that's going to convene in this room, and that's it. 10.30 30 on Monday the 27th. Uh, so okay. we will be up and running and then they do have a schedule that lays this the whole program out through the fall and in there there are windows of time that they're targeting for the charrettes as Serena has said and those will, always, those will also be brought forward so people will be, be aware of that. But the goal for this would be uh, to uh, have an attempt to have a study or uh, a pilot of some type to, to try out this mixed use that we'd like to get uh, downtown, right. um, which is mixing commercial with some residential. And then we've got the CAC study. You've heard a lot about that. Of course, we should have gotten it underway last year. Oh, but sorry, Frank. CAC stands for Kittery Area, Kittery Area Comprehensive. Comprehensive Transportation System. Okay. And it's got basically four communities in it. Berwick is one of those communities. Um, it got delayed from getting really off the ground because of the, all the detouring that was done as part of the bridge project. Um, and interferences with traffic patterns and pedestrian patterns and that. Uh, it was going to get going and then we got all that snow and we kind of waited to that for that to pass because one of, we, one of the big things we feel is going to be an existing conditions map that will be developed from, from the consultant and that's VHB is the consultant doing the work. Um, with that in hand, that's going to be the base for a lot of things, but with that being said, it's going to look at not only traffic patterns, it'll also be looking at pedestrian patterns, particular sidewalks and where sidewalks may or may not need to be in, uh, included. Crosswalks. Crosswalks. Um, and then there's also a big component of it will be parking, inventorying the existing parking and parking spaces that we have in the immediate downtown. And we've also asked them, or we're going to ask them to incorporate a couple of things in here uh, as part of that parking is how we address maybe the park and ride type commuters that we're seeing here. And also being able to coordinate with the coast bus service 
for those of you who don't know, but Coast actually runs two buses in the morning and two in the afternoon. They pick, they pick up people in Summersworth, Berwick, South Berwick, and all the way down through where they take them to the Navy Yard. That is called the Clipper Express, I believe, or something along that line, and it's actually uh, subsidized in part by the government because the government is paying for the part of the ridership fees for the people to use it. Um, if you've been, if you remember the old Route 236 corridor years and years ago, it used to be a, a maze of cars down there. I think public transportation and what Coast is providing is a vital service, and, and it can be linked to our downtown and to our surrounding community as well. So that that will all be um, uh, uh, stepping off here shortly. John Stoll met with Tom Rainauer today, and we should have the date for a site walk uh, in a meeting, and it's going to be either next week or it'll be in May, but it won't be the week of the town meeting vote on the, on the 12th. It'll be the 6th, 20th, or the 27th. But that, we think, is a big, um, big component of where we're going as far as revitalizing the downtown. I'm going to ask Paul, Paul land use, I think, is the other big piece we got coming up here. Yeah. Um, so in the survey that we had two years ago, um, the, the, the really important things that came out of that was that everyone wanted to deal with prime tanning and redevelop that site, get some tax money coming back into the town with that site. Um, and along with that, the other real big points that were made by the people that filled out the survey was they wanted a downtown that people could come to, uh, where they could be safe down here. Uh, it would be a friendly place to spend some time, bring their kids, um, and that's all part of, of this whole Envision Berwick stuff we're doing. And the river also was brought out as a very important component of this whole thing. To get that done, it's a multi-step process, and in the state of Maine, it starts out by having a comprehensive plan that has public input and is voted on by the public. We did that last year. Uh, the next step is to implement uh, these components of the comprehensive plan as part of a land use ordinance and what the town has done which will be voted on May 12th is to have a village overlay district which is largely prime and the town hall uh, starting at the bridge and uh, up to the Estabrook parcel including the, the old Catholic Church which are the pieces that we really want to redevelop um, that overlay is going to um, have different things. The setbacks would be different. They're going to be reduced. It'll be more of a pedestrian friendly environment. Um, we're going to allow mixed use where the residential can only be above uh, commercial use and that's hopefully going to encourage more commercial use with maybe condos or something of that type above it. Uh, the articles are Article 3. Yep, there's a couple articles on the 12th that we're going to vote on. One is the land use ordinance that we're talking about right now, the modifications uh, for the uh, village overlay. And um, there's another article that deals with some seed money to keep this group going. Uh, that's Article 24. 24, I think. correct. Yeah, so those will be the two articles that we're. Uh, strongly in, in favor of <laughs> very strongly yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so definitely may vote um, for the land use ordinance updates to help us with the you can actually see um, this image it's it's transparent in the background here but the one on the right is the um, land use ordinance updates village overlay district yeah there is a map in the lobby of the town hall that shows what this <coughs> overlay district for the boundaries are. It's pretty limited right here downtown. And when the planning board went through the process, they did hold a public meeting. They reached out. They noticed all the butters within it. Um, it's an interesting uh, ordinance overlay in that people could opt out of it if they didn't want to be in it. A good example is there was a property owner out there that was on the peripheral of the, of the overlay. He opted out. 
But what's interesting is the ordinance is also written that he could opt in later on. So it's not like he's being denied that opportunity and it's a one bite of the apple. So it's flexible in that score. Um, other people can opt in if they're if they're within reach of the of the overlay. Um, but I, again, we th we think that. Uh, We've been making every effort to try to get it out to the public and explain it, and and, and we did a, a Q and A or a frequently asked questions with the planning board. Um, I'm not sure if we're trying to do another one before town meeting, but Article Three is very very important to accomplishing the downtown vision in in in, in the manner in which the public has expressed that they would like to see it move forward. Mm -hmm. A little bit on Article Twenty Four. That's an Envision Berwick. It's a, it's a money article. Um, we feel that we, similar to what we did with the Downtown Vision Committee, we had a small stipend of $25,000 that we used to advance that. This gives us a little bit of money to allow us to move forward with some additional mailers. Um, a big part of it is it gives us some money to make available for matching grants. And one of the things we found when Tom and I spoke to the rural development is part of the criteria in the competition for those kinds of funds, uh, matching grants, leveraging money with money that you have, all those things are very important. So now this will give us an opportunity to work with the selectmen and pursue those kinds of, those kinds of grants. So we're asking that you support Articles 3 for the land use ordinance and Article 24 for the Envision Berwick budget. Indeed. Um, and so let's see, those were kind of some big projects that we are working on. And um, the next slide has um, a couple more projects that are um, kind of further down the line that are just getting started or haven't started yet. The first of which is the Welcome to Berwick sign that still says, Home of Friend Henning, that someone spray painted green. Um, so we're going to work on that. Um, we're trying to think of slogans, so if you have any ideas for a town slogan, um, I mean, do you want do you want me to tell you our, our current favorite? <laughs> I, well, we, we do we do have one suggestion. It's Berwick. You have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the going people favorite. Like it, some people don't. <laughs> but, for, <laughs> but, but for people who remember who remember the survey, the twelfth question we asked or the eleventh question we asked was to fill in a slogan for the town. Berwick is, or Berwick means, or mm -hmm. whatever. And I think if you go back through the report, we had over 80 or 90 of those that, that came in at the time. So we had a pretty good base to start from. And there are some common themes that run through through all of these. So yeah, we're, we're so we'll, we'll plug through those, and then we'll ask for some more suggestions if, if we need some more help, yeah. um, and probably come up yeah. with some sort of voting thing. Yeah. Um, and then next is this land um, on the river adjacent to the dam and further down. Um, there's this big plot of land that's kind of overgrown with invasive bittersweet vines that are bringing down trees and um, there's litter everywhere. There's all kinds of things. And we've always kind of eyeballed that piece of land um, because it's beautiful. It has a beautiful view of the river and the dam and it's really not being used. And there's even some trails on it already from neighborhood kids running around in it. Um, so we've been eyeballing that as a potential park space um, that we think could be really awesome. And, and Frank has some news on that. And what we've done is, it, 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 some of it's gonna coincide with another project that the town is doing. And we're, we're, we're kind of adopting that if we've got something going on and we can derive a couple of benefits out of it, we'd like to, to take advantage of those. And, and there's another warrant article on the town warrant that deals with the uh, stormwater system and it's part of the requirements, the permitting requirements that, that we are under. And it, it identified a, this parcel of land, which is the pub, public service company in New Hampshire piece of land. Uh, it has four outfalls that currently go across it. And when EPA came through and did their, uh, DEP came through and did their audit, it was identified that there were some significant deficiencies in there. Um, the Warren article will address those. I th don't have the Warren article, but I believe it's 35 or something like that. But it's a $60,000 one that we, we really need to do because of the, the permitting requirements. But what's going to happen is 
we hope to derive a secondary benefit out of that and ask to maintain some kind of a permanent access way to get down onto this property. If you're familiar with Moulton Street and you go to the end and you turn 90 degrees to go up the hill there, it's the land, everything on your right hand side on the riverside is, and it sits down and it's a beautiful piece of land. It's got a fantastic view looking back at, at the dam. Um, got a gorge. And we got to get down in there to, to, to repair some drainage ditches and some outfall pipes and we hope to be able to make it more accessible to get down in there. Obviously in the long term the, the, they're going to have to get down in there to maintain it with bigger equipment anyway so we want to derive that from those from the use of those funds. And it's another interesting piece because um, it was first identified back in 1992 by Kim Myers when she did her master's uh, thesis at Radcliffe she did a trail system and that was a trailhead right there on that piece of land and it ran the entire length of the river all the way down to the five acre island down by the wastewater treatment plant and actually there's some old abutments on that island and we actually had discussions with Summersworth at one time about possibly putting in the, the pedestrian bridges to that island and back across so we think there are a lot of opportunities to work with Summersworth on some of these kinds of amenities that are very popular for people today, would maintain our rural character, and would allow the public to take benefit and use and access to the, to the river. Um, we've also talked with the, um, the people that own the mill on the other side, immediately across the river from, from this piece of land. And uh, Eric Chinberg uh, has been very receptive to talking to us about possibly putting in another little pedestrian bridge there. Um, again, there used to be one in the it, 1800s. And there used to be a bridge that came across to that piece of land. So the idea is if we start putting back some of the old, maintain the, the, f the, 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 and preserve that forest area in there, it's a beautiful spot to stand there and look back at the, at the dam. Uh, as a matter of fact, the day we did the, uh, the charrette walk, uh, Tom was on crutches and he had walked all the way out in the middle of the, of the river down here to get some video of it, if I, I recall. And, uh, it's, it, I don't it, remember that. <laughs> we got pictures to prove it. But the point is, is that that's on our on our agenda to to start working with PSNH. We feel we will be successful because on the other side of the river, Summersworth a number of years ago uh, worked, uh, or a developer worked with PSNH to acquire what they call the Mass Point Dam property up there. The dam was breached and removed, and now the city of Summersworth has it, and they're putting in a, a walkway, parkway kind of a thing there. This is up off of Rochester Street. This is up Street. off of Rochester Street um, um, Salmon on Salmon Falls. It's, sure. it's, the, it's right on the rochester Summersworth line. They end up with 2,800 feet of frontage along the river. They're going to put in a hand launch for boats as well. Um, and they're going to, and they were able to secure some funds for that, and they're going to match it with some in-kind services with people to provide labor and this, that, and the other. So we're going to kind of monitor that s situation, even though it's on the other side of the river. State of Maine still offers those very same kinds of funding programs. So we're going to see if we can use it to trigger a, another avenue to get across the river from a pedestrian. If I if I could just add something on that piece of property, is is out uh, in the. Uh, article for our funding there's money included in there to, to do, do right. some assessment of that piece of property mm -hmm. but we've also reached out to the great works land exactly. trust about acquiring that and they've expressed interest in doing that and uh, for those people that don't know the great works land trust has been uh, putting land in Berwick into conservation easement and I believe they have close to 600 acres in Berwick now under easement so. yeah and this is a very um, <coughs> pertinent topic because the Salmon Falls is actually, as we learned last year at one of our 101 sessions, the Salmon Falls is one of the most threatened rivers in the whole country actually because there's so much um, old farmland that has the potential to be developed into um, housing and commercial things um, in the future. So it's something that a lot of people um, at the EPA in Boston even are working on, um, helping communities um, conserve natural space around the river so that it doesn't pollute it. It's also where we get our drinking water from. And then the other project that we've kind of put on the forefront here is looking at how we can get natural gas into Berwick. Um, 
if we build this out over here, we don't really want all these buried oil tanks and this, that, and the other. We'd kind of like to put something back that's a little cleaner as far as the footprint goes. So we've been dealing with Unitil, and we've been dealing with an, a compressed natural gas company. Um, we understand that be, just because there's a, a, an interstate line there, you do run into PUC rules in New Hampshire and PUC rules in Maine. And we've been told neither of the twain shall meet. But we're not taking no for an answer just <laughs> so that you know that. And we're trying to look at ways that we can move that ball forward. Uh, and it might not be now, but it might be three years from now or five years from now. But we at least want to have an understanding on how we could get gas across the river from the Summersworth side. There's about there's three avenues that we could bring it in. One of them would be a major, major disruption to Summersworth's downtown, and we do not want to do that one. So we're looking at the other two uh, as, as, as avenues. Um, the, the thing we're looking at is a compressed natural gas facility, which would be located right downtown. It would be no different than that 30,000-gallon propane tank that Prime had sitting there on their site, if anybody ever remembered that. But this is a much more efficient site, smaller footprint. Um, as a result, we need to investigate some PUC rules because it becomes a public utility if it ends up serving more than one property. Um, so Tom and I are, are, are working on that, and if we can make some headway, we, our goal would be is to try to create a service area in the downtown for, for natural compressed natural gas with the long-range plan being able to bring a pipeline into the community. Um, we already know it's going to cost over $4 million to run it in seven miles from North Berwick, and we think if we can approach a couple of these avenues in Summersworth, deal with the PUC, we may be able to get something here at a far cheaper rate. Um, and we are aware, too, in some of our early on discussions, and I've mentioned this to the, to the selectmen, that the Fund of Jupiter had indicated they recognized how important it would be to get a clean fuel source in there for, for heat and, and, and the rest. And he had indicated a willingness to move forward with a budget number. And we feel that if we're successful on this compressed natural gas, that we may be able to make some headway in putting back whatever we do there in a much cleaner and in, in, in less carbon footprint. Um, yeah. And that's based on my limited knowledge of carbon footprint. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd, I'd just like to add on to that just a little bit, you know, speaking of carbon footprints is, is one of the other things that we've talked about with the site a little bit, we haven't gone too far with it, is that the whole downtown area has full solar gain. It has sunshine, right? Day, day long sunshine, and this is something that we're looking at, you know, to incorporate over here also. But another thing that I've started doing a little bit of research on is actually using the thermal energy out of the river is uh, the old prime tanning has a permit to draw water off the river. And the technology is advancing now where they can actually get the geothermal heat they need for these buildings from the river water. So that's another possibility that right. we're starting to explore. And we feel that if, <clears throat> if we go forward with the Brownsfield, and as Rick had explained, that the, the limit you are on the number of parcels, we've got seven parcels, we're into a three-year maybe window if we're successful with that. So. We're not going to just sit and wait till the end of three years and start some of these dialogues. We're running all this stuff on a parallel track. Some of it will have merit. Some of it will come to, to come to fruition. Some of it will probably just drop off the screen. But we're, yeah. we're taking the next three years to just keep talking about everything. And I've used the phrase, we're going to throw everything at the wall, and if it sticks, we're going with it. And we're looking for people to help with those things. Because I will tell you, those are the fun things. When you get involved in some of these things, you're learning the process, you're learning and educating yourself, um, you can have a lot of fun doing it. And especially when you accomplish something, it, it can be as small as putting up a Christmas tree. It's pretty rewarding to see a community come together and do that. And we've got our first big trial run here on, uh, on our fundraiser for our uh, riverfront. And I will say they've got a good start because we got rid of that old water plant that sat there for years and years and years. And we took advantage of a contractor Brown Industrial Group did their Rochester Street. Steve Brown was forth, came forward and was more than willing to help and worked it out. And it made a budget that was very, very doable and at the time made perfectly good sense to do. 
and now we got something we're working with. So those are the things we have. We have a good community here. We have a lot of people that have a lot to offer, and we, we just want to let them know we're looking for all that help along the way. Yeah, so um, you leave you with this slide that has some upcoming events and upcoming meetings. Um, and we really encourage anyone out there um, who is interested in any of the topics, we kind of threw a lot of information at you today, but any of the topics that interest you, um, please get in touch with us. Um, you can do that. Are our emails on the town website? I'm not sure how they've got it set up. We do have our own little group, and John is our contact person. John yeah. Stowell. Town, town planner, the, John Stowell. The town planner um, could point you to any of us, um, our email addresses. You can also <laughs> find us on Facebook, Envision Berwick, when you search Envision Berwick, um, and send us a message. James and I will get it, and we can direct you to whoever um, whoever is the leader, the ringleader of whichever project you're interested in. Um, if you have ideas for projects we haven't even mentioned, if you know a lot about renewable energy and how to bring that to municipalities, like let us know about it. Um, there's all kind of, kinds of ways you can be involved. And for those who are already involved, we thank you very much um, for helping build this awesome revitalization effort. So if we did our job, there should be no questions? <laughs> I, I think there should be lots of questions okay, if we did our job I agree. Right. Lots of questions. We're ready. Yeah. And, oh, and vote May 12th and tell your friends to vote as well. Um, so yes, we'll open it up to questions at this point. Quiet out there. <laughs> we did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought about the river. We're talking about the river and Summersworth is going to have the Mass Point Dam open to thousands of people and no one wants to paddle up river so they're all going to want to get out in Berwick, right? Hmm. That's a good point. A picture of maybe a new canoe race uh, could be started in the next year. That would year be or fun. Something. That would be something. Yeah, <laughs> we could have a competition. <laughs> That's yeah. We got to build it with or some exciting. Their flag on yeah. The bridge for the year. That would be fun. <laughs> we actually, I believe, have a Summers Earth resident sitting in the audience. We do, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis would be happy to speak for the, no. the city. <laughs> 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 if nobody else has anything to add, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about. You know, we talked about the, the cat studies there as, uh, and the uh, traffic patterns and things. As one of the things that we found out during this whole process is that the bridge between Berwick and Summersworth is the third most traveled entry point in, in the state of Maine. And what, 18,000 cars Correct. pass through? And we capture almost none of that is a pass through. And that's one of the things we're looking at with the downtown. We want to bring things into town that are going to get people to come here and stay here and do business here. And that's the other thing with the, as uh, we talked about the bus service to the Navy Yard, they're between 15 and 20 people or more parking their cars here all day and just using it as a parking lot. And that's something that we need to look at is how we can capture those people and get their business also. Well, those are the types of things that we've been looking at, trying to incorporate everything we possibly can to get something going downtown here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things I wanted to point out too is that um, we're also trying to find out, f find ways that we can afford this. And we're, we're very sensitive to the dollars and we think one of the most important 101s we will do will be this TIF 101, this tax increment financing. Um, a lot of towns are doing it. Um, a lot of municipalities are finding that it's a way to get something um, moving and be successful without impacting the tax rate significantly. Um, and we need to understand how that can work because some of the things we're talking about, such as sidewalks, such as maybe we put in some lights, some, some LED lights. If you look at the bridge, probably the, the new lights on the bridge, if we could take the one down on our side by Gateway Gas and we could get one taken to PS&H light on the other side of the bridge, probably those old Cobra head lights that the utilities use, we could probably run our, LED, our six LED lights on that bridge for, forever with the savings that we would realize from getting rid of the old incandescent and, and, and sodium lights fixtures. Um, 
So the idea behind, behind can we afford it, if we structure some of the needs and one of the other things we can possibly get out of this could be a, a main street. Uh, just so that you know, the CACS program isn't just the Kittery Area Comprehensive Transportation System funding is not just for studies. It's also for construction and building things out. And Kittery just got one not too long ago here for $850,000 to redo a section of their street. So if we're fortunate to move forward with a reconfiguration of a corridor through the middle of, of, of uh, Prime Site, or whether it's a revitalization of the Wilson Street corridor, whatever comes out of this CAC study, there are opportunities there to go back to those programs and secure some funding for, for those types of larger capital dollars. Those are 80 cents on the dollar. We have to come up with 20%. So if you could fund that 20% through some TIF district funding right. and a small <clears throat> bond, um, those are all things that we need to at least be open to look at because whatever we come away with, we got to be able to, we got to be able to afford it. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's important to point out also that when you do uh, improve, I mean, the the bottom line here is we would like to have a stable tax rate in this town, right. and if you don't invest in the town, um, you probably won't because you can't leave things the way they are, and we want to have tax revenues generated from the 12 acres that are empty in our town. And, and you have to work on it, and you have to keep working on it, and don't stop till you succeed. Mm -hmm. Mentioning the funding is, is uh, when Frank and I went to the USDA, well, actually before, I got onto their website and started looking at all the different programs, and is they fund a very wide variety of different things. Is one of the things that they do help fund uh, community centers. Yep. <laughs> is um but the other thing that i found is they have funding to help farmers markets right oh. they said they 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 helped with a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar farmers market in either wells or york i believe wait who is this organization usda <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, united oh, states yeah. department yeah, yeah, yeah. of agriculture yeah. 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 okay yeah yeah i was gonna get you that information they're the ones yeah, that stamped the meat with that blue Round. And, and there's an eligibility criteria to their programs, and, and, and I would hate to see Berwick all of a sudden decide to get involved in this and then find out we're outside the criteria. It's limited to populations of 10,000 and less. We're at 7,200, 7,800. Um, now's the time, and I will tell you, the sewer district was successful in getting theirs for their school street project. They ended up getting a 40% grant out of a $1.4 million project to rebuild the, the, the system here. Um, so I would hate to be a day late and a thousand people too many when we decide to move forward. So, I mean, we're right at, a, at the cusp of where we gotta start getting serious about looking at some of these things and I think if you move forward with redeveloping our downtown and we're successful with Brownsfield and bringing in other programs, um, all these funding agencies love to be part of a winner. And if you can mix and match funds and bring two programs in together, that looks good for them and we end up deriving a benefit out of it as a community. So we're on a, we're on a criteria eligible 10,000 population threshold that we gotta make sure we have all our ducks lined up beforehand. Yeah. All right, these guys could talk forever. So does anyone have any other questions? Because we don't get to see you guys very often, and I have to see them all the time. <laughs> well, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. <laughs> I'm talking to them. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Myself, sometimes, <laughs> usually. If there are no questions, um, can I ask you guys a question? Um, what is something that makes that would make you really excited to see downtown in that prime tanning space or just downtown anywhere tequila, <laughs> tequila bars <laughs> dennis agrees actually <laughs> gathering spaces mm -hmm. of both outside and inside yeah. dog park places to sit and visit And that's consistent with the survey results when we came back. And if people remembered seeing 
the renderings, we had a full range of renderings from 10% green to 75% green. And the one that everybody kind of zeroed in on was a 40% green where it did provide those public gathering spots. It did provide opportunities for people to, you know, to come downtown and want to stay downtown. And, and that's why we think the traffic is an important piece because you don't necessarily want to be downtown sitting out here with 18,000 cars going by. So it's got to be a mix and a match. And I think that's why this CAC study is going to be so important to, to, you know, fitting into how our vision wants it to be somewhat green and, and common space. And, and linking with that, one of the things that we're actually working on currently, Jeff has been working on, it, is looking at Wi-Fi coverage downtown. And so, you know, people have something, people want to do something with their electronics while they're downtown. And so as we're, we're hopefully we'll be moving forward in that sometime soon. Um, another thing that we were talking about traffic and, and things at the bridge. Um, one thing that is going to happen is some of those poles in and around the bridge will be coming down and there'll be some underground utilities going in and that's that's almost set in motion right, right now. Right. And, and uh, I know Frank has the ideas of actually working on the poles that are in front of uh, the subway and the insurance agency and that kind of yeah. that kind of area and that would change the look of our downtown and just make it more inviting again and uh, attract new businesses that would want to come in it's pretty ugly to look at those poles and, and wires and then the other thing is if you ended up with some of the street light ornamental street light kind of poles along there instead of the big tall poles with the cobra heads on them so again we've had a good rapport with central main power um, they did a prelim preliminary layout of that entire downtown for nothing to show how we could keep it underground. Um, usually what happens is when they pick their corridor, you find that Fairpoint and, and Comcast usually follow because they end up common trenching a lot of their stuff. Um, and then we're also looking at doing just an inventory of all the lights downtown with CMP. So they've been more than willing to, to provide us that kind of direction. And again, that's one of these parallel things that we're doing during this three-year window while we're hopefully being successful with Brownsfield things. We want to bring all these things forward and be ready to do them when everything is coming, to, coming into play. So May 1st, they're closing the bridge and, do they're, and they're finishing up the work on the bridge right doing the final railroad grade yeah indeed all right well if there are no questions are there questions we have a question I have a question when is the hatch post 79 car show 7 June. 7 June okay that's a big attraction in the downtown area it was very successful with the Charles Hatch post when we did it on the 300th and they're moving forward with that again this year and again, that's the, to draw more people downtown. Streets, I'm assuming, will be blocked off in a similar fashion, and parking will be in the outlying areas. So, I'll start early. It's going to start at eight o'clock this year. This year's eight o'clock. Okay. Good. And someone had a question. Oh, no, I was just going to add more comments. To answer your question, a barbecue pit, a rest, a breakfast place. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I want, like, a, small a some place the community like, can meet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Community <laughs> gathering market. center, a you, brewery, um, like a nature's you know, way. Yes. Kind of you know, market. Berwick. Gas station market. Berwick had four grocery stores at one time on the corners. Competition, man. <laughs> you had Bell's, wow. Johnson's. Exactly, Dennis knows those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the idea is we have eighteen thousand cars coming across the bridge. Yeah. Every single day, and at some point. Somebody has to take notice of that and recognize that there's economic opportunity sitting in those vacant 12, you're calling it 12 acres, plus or minus acres over there. And it, it's, it's not worth, keep, keep on moving through the community. It's, it's time to stay, stop and yeah. have some vitality here. I'd like to put up, I, I just had a thought again. We were, a few of us were standing out across the street, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, we were standing there with somebody that was telling us old Berwick stories that I had never heard. <laughs> they were wicked funny. 
I mean, things that took place in the buildings across the street with an undertaker we had sliding a, caskets out the door down a, a sluice way of some type. We had a casket that, builder in town. Yeah. I mean, we, no okay, we don't need one of those. <laughs> 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 empty caskets. That's what we do. <laughs> There's always a need for those. <laughs> um, but it, it'd be nice to be able to get some of the uh, the older people in town to, at, at some point, chip in with their stories and, and have, like, uh, during one of our events, just have old-timer stories on what things were like 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> that would be really fun. Yeah. We've had a couple <laughs> of pool halls in town. And we had an arcade, yeah. Oh, the Friends of Berwick has a lot of history. People are adding stuff all the Friends of Berwick. How did we not know about this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, any last questions? Or comments? Or comments? All right. Well, thank you very much for coming tonight, and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. And vote May 12th. Please remember your vote. <laughs> thank you.